One of the very exciting aspects of stem cell therapy, of adult stem cell therapy, is that adult stem cells are part of a natural regenerative process. And when you are administering adult stem cells, what you are doing is helping the body to heal itself. You are assisting a natural process. And the reason why we mention this and why we believe this is the case is because in situations of tissue injury, the body attracts its own stem cells to try to heal the injured tissue. So we're going to talk about a publication that was one of the earlier publications suggesting this concept. It's published in the journal Circulation in 2001. What the investigators ask themselves is, in the condition of tissue injury, a very good example of tissue injury, of course, being heart attack, where the heart muscle is actually dying, parts of it is di are dying. Uh, in this example, do stem cells leave the bone marrow and go into the peripheral blood circulation in response to the injury? And what the authors did of the paper, they examined 16 patients who had a heart attack and 8 control patients. Uh, we know the patients had a heart attack because all 16 of them had at least uh, half an hour or more uh, chest pain unrelieved by nitroglycerin. They had a rise in serum creatinine and kinase. They also had Q-wave abnormalities and, of course, angiogra angiographically, it was demonstrated that these patients had a complete occlusion of one of the three major coronary arteries. So, when you take these patients and take blood samples at day one, day three, day seven, and so on. As you can see in the graph on the y-axis, there's an increase in CD34 numbers in the blood, suggesting that the stem cells are mobilized. In contrast, in the control, the CD34 levels were undetectable or very low, and they were not placed in this graph. Um, now, Seeing that there is a rise in CD34, the next question that the investigators asked is what do these cells look like? Or if you just take the blood from these patients and culture it, do you see stem cells or do you see some kind of interesting morphological observation? By morphology, I mean shape. And as you can see, cultured uh, cells from these patients' blood after the heart attack, they express the markers KDR which is the um, kinase domain receptor, it's actually VEGF receptor 2. Uh, they express CD31, and they also express the ability to uptake fluorescent labeled acetylated LDL. Basically, these mean, this means that the cells have an endothelial precursor-like phenotype, or they're the stem cells that give rise to blood vessels. And this will make sense, if you think about it, because in the heart attack, there is lack of oxygen in the damaged tissue, and the tissue is going to be trying to make new blood vessels in order to heal the damaged area. So going along this concept that the stem cells are actually endothelial type stem cells, uh, stem cells that make blood vessels, the investigators looked at the morphology in more detail, and as you can see in this figure on the left is the number of adherent cells. The white bars are the samples from the control patients who did not have a heart attack. The black bars are the samples from the patients who had a heart attack. And as you can see on day seven, there's an increased number of the cells who, which are adhering. And also, if you look on the right-hand side, you can see an increased number of cells forming spindle-like clusters, which is one of the characteristics of endothelial-like cells, or cells differentiating into blood vessels. Now, Mechanistically, the investigators wanted to know if there is a cytokine, a soluble mediator being released uh, from the injured uh, myocardium. And I didn't show you the table, but they assessed a variety of cytokines. And of these cytokines, they noticed that VEGF, vascular endothelial growth factor, the levels of this one peak at around day 7. And as you can see in this figure, there is actually a correlation, a statistically significant correlation between the level of VEGF in the plasma and the number of mobilized CD34s. So what this study from 2001 is indicating is that in response to the damaged heart tissue, there is an increased mobilization of bone marrow-derived cells, cells going into circulation, presumably going to try to heal the injured heart tissue. 
and this seems to be mediated in part by VEGF. Now, therapeutically, the question has been put forward and is now under investigation. What happens if you give stem cells? At this point, give stem cells from the outside in order to increase the number of cells going and healing the heart. And there have been some clinical studies already performed showing positive uh, increase in heart function as a result of stem cell administration. You can see some of these studies here on the YouTube channel. And in the future, the, um, the scientists are evaluating different ways of augmenting this natural process in order to help accelerate the damaged heart after a heart attack. Thank you very much.